AQA, A level physics, astrophysics. This is my second video about telescopes. And this one is about reflecting telescopes. And this is the chunk of the syllabus that we're going to be looking at. Cassegrain, there are different ways, different designs of reflecting telescope. The one that we're doing is called a Cassegrain. Don't worry about that. Basically, there are two mirrors, a parabolic mirror uh, and a convex, small convex mirror. And I'll show you how to do the ray diagram. And we're going to talk about advantages and disadvantages of reflecting and refracting telescopes. And we'll know what spherical and chromatic aberration are. Let's do it. So our diagram is going to look a bit like this. As I said, two mirrors, a parabolic mirror, which has a hole in the middle, and a small convex mirror. So let's let's draw this together then. Uh, when you draw it. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw my principal axis. So basically a horizontal line. There you go. That's my principal axis. Not bad with a mouser. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is the big parabolic mirror. So there's my big parabolic mirror. Obviously, you just have to sketch that with your pencil. Um, and this shape here is a parabola. It's actually the same as the path of a projectile, which is what the word parabola, parabola means. Uh, as it's a mirror, we should put some hatching on there to show that it's a mirror. Uh, and it's a um, concave mirror, which basically means that it's shiny on the inside. OK, so there's my mirror. Uh, it actually has a hole in the middle and we'll see why in a bit. So there's my mirror and the hole in the middle is kind of. Here. It's got a hole in the middle. Now, the special thing about a, a parabola is that any rays of light which are parallel to the principal axis, so a ray of light here comes along and it hits the mirror and it bounces off the mirror and it goes through that point there. So that's the focus of the parabolic mirror. I'll do another ray of light which is parallel. And that comes along there and it bounces off the mirror and it goes through that point as well. In fact, any ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis will go through that point there. That is the focus of my parabola of the parabolic mirror. Let's add a few arrows just to show the direction of these rays. OK, so so far so good. That, that's why it's a parabolic mirror. All these rays of light uh, hit the focus of the parabola there. Now, what we do next is we put a spherical convex mirror, uh, a smaller spherical convex mirror here. Now, a uh, convex mirror means that it's shiny on the outside. OK, now what's going to happen there when these rays of light, this is before the focal point, if you like. So these rays of light will bounce off this mirror and they will go through the hole in the big mirror. That's a bit sneaky. So these rays of light will go through the hole in the big mirror like that, come out there. Now, that is actually all you have to be able to do. So you've done the two mirrors and you've shown the rays of light bouncing off the mirror. In practice, what you would have next is you would have an, an eyepiece lens, which is a concave, a diverging lens there. And what that would do would be to make these rays of light parallel and then you look in there and you see what's going on. OK, but you don't actually need to do it. You do it. It's the specification says to the eyepiece, 
but that's what the eyepiece would do. So the two mirrors, lots of rays of light, great stuff. We've looked at two types of telescope now, uh, refracting and reflecting. So lenses and mirrors. Uh, what are the advantages? Learn these. What are the advantages of reflecting telescopes? Well, you look on telescopehouse.com and you will notice that for the same magnification, uh, the reflecting ones are smaller uh, and they are cheaper. OK, so um, yeah, so reflecting telescopes are smaller and cheaper. Go to telescopehouse.com. Check it out for yourself. See what you can get for, let's say, 200 quid and look at the magnification. Um, now, it's easier to make large mirrors than it is to make large lenses. So large telescopes are nearly all reflectors. Uh, and not just optical ones, we're talking radio telescopes and other types as well. The big, big telescopes, they are reflectors, okay? Not refractors. It's very difficult to make a large, big lens accurately. Uh, and because of this, large telescopes collect lots of light. So you get a nice, bright image and they have a better resolving power which we'll talk about in another video. Uh, also, chromatic aberration is not a problem. What's that? We'll look on that on the next slide. There are some disadvantages of reflecting telescopes. Uh, if you're, you are buying a telescope uh, and if you're not going to use it, if it's not going to stay in the same place all of the time, and you're going to kind of chuck it in the boot of a car and drive out into the countryside and things. Uh, that can be a problem with reflecting telescopes because it's very easy to nudge the mirror out of position. And when you start doing that, then you start getting this thing called spherical aberration, which I'll talk about pretty soon. OK, so smaller telescopes or rather the if it's a smaller telescope, which is a reflector, it's less portable. The refracting telescopes are a lot more rugged that you can chuck them in the boot of the car, get them out and they'll work perfectly well. So what is chromatic aberration? Well, the first thing is, what does it look like? Aberration means there's a problem. It's distorted. Yeah, uh, it, it looks like a bit blurred and kind of a bit rainbowy, a bit of Roy G. Biv going on. Uh, and the reason that's happening is because with a lens, a piece of glass, different wavelengths of light have different refractive indices. So the blue light will bend more than the red light uh, when it passes through a lens. Just like when light goes through a prism, you get Roy G. Biv. Uh, and the lens is basically acting like a prism so different wavelengths of light will bend more or less and you'll end up with blurred rainbowy edges. This can be corrected if you use special lenses which have a special coating on, uh, but they do tend to be quite expensive. This is where you're paying big bucks for a telescope. OK, uh, it's like a, a, a good camera has a good lens. A good telescope has got good lenses. Yeah. Uh, and this isn't a problem with reflecting telescopes because they use mirrors. What is a problem with reflecting telescopes is something called spherical uh, aberration. And that's basically if the mirror isn't perfectly parabolic. Uh, maybe it's been misaligned. Maybe you, it's been transported and knocked out of position. Maybe it hasn't been very well made. And if it's not perfectly parabolic, then there won't be a precise focal point uh, and the rays of light will converge at different places and you'll end up with a blurred image. Uh, very famously, the, the Hubble telescope, which I'm sure you've heard of, had a reflecting mirror in it. Uh, and it was just slightly, slightly like you're talking the width of a human hair very slightly nudged out of position 
and a result of, as a result of that some of the images were nowhere near as good as they could be so they had a special mission up to the up to the Hubble telescope in space uh, with corrective optics so they kind of fixed the problem by adding another lens I believe it was like a contact lens almost and when they did that then the images that they got from it were absolutely fantastic I'll just mention quickly now that the James Webb telescope is made up of several mirrors and the mirrors can be moved around and you can almost change their shape using little motors and things so that if any problem like this occurs it, it automatically becomes a perfect parabola anyway end of video good eh